It's great to see you guys. Um, you know, it's nice that we're sitting, you know, on the couch. We're at the CBC building, Kim's Convenience. We're talking about another fantastic season. This is, what is this? Uh, four. Man, um, you know, it just seems like we've always had this series. Like, I want to say forever because that's not the right thing to say, but it's just been so ingrained in the Canadian culture. Yeah, um, yeah well, it's, it's kind of like um, smartphones. Yeah. You know, like 10 years ago, nobody, had, you know, who had a smartphone, but now it's such, uh, it, it's part of the fabric of our, our society. And Kim's Convenience, it's it's kind of neat in that way, because it's, it's like you say, it feels like it's been around for, for that, for, for a very long time. But I think it also speaks to the, how familiar it is, but um, the impact it's had, the rela- relatability of the show. I think it, it feels natural for it to be part of our society, because we, we tell stories that are so familiar and are relatable to, to, to Canadians in particular. So, Especially Torontonians, I guess, and, and probably anyone in a, in a culturally diverse city. Mm-hmm. There's, there's, um, there's, a, there's a dynamic, a, a character dynamic that, uh, at play in our show that is a lot that you find in, in cities where, where you've, uh, that are so diverse. Absolutely. Do you are you used to being recognized now as your characters? Are you used to that? And are people surprised because if you remember the last time we did an interview together, you did your character and it was hilarious and so many people were just like I didn't know she spoke that way, meaning the way you usually speak. It was so funny because that's the way they think you speak all the time. Yeah, it's well, I, we do get recognized a lot. It, it all in all kinds of ways. I can, I think the season one, what freaked me out was I got recognized in the change room at the YMCA <laughs> while I was naked, and she was naked too, and was like, ah, <laughs> that was the funniest. But it happens pretty much every day. Um, uh, Halloween was fun too because some of the kids coming to the door didn't know that they didn't. Yeah, they didn't know that uh, that was pretty funny. You have these little tiny, tiny little witches and and um, and minions and stuff going, Ah, you, Mrs. Kim! <laughs> it's like, <laughs> you're a minion! <laughs> so uh, that was really fun. Yeah. We got recognized in Korea as well. Yeah. When we were in yeah, because yeah, you, uh, you guys won an award down there. We did. Best, yeah. uh, most popular international drama. Um, and uh, we went down, we were at Seoul, and we picked up that award, from, from which was a tremendous honor. Um, but we, yeah, we got recognized there, which is, of all the places in the world, like, honestly thought we could fly in under the radar, and no one would know, because, you know, it's, it's, it's a little, you know, the little Canadian show that is, you know, how is it going to be received in Korea if people, if Korean people are actually going to be watching it, and they do. Um, you know, it's, it's been carried on a, on a network in Korea, also Netflix Asia, they carry it, and uh, Jean and Andrea were in in the market Namdaemun, and they got recognized by by Street Vendor, which yeah. is great. Yeah, and, um, it happened uh, in the hotel a bunch of times yes, too, and yeah, yeah but, but other places like that. So, yeah. Yeah. No. And and of course, uh, we have a certain somebody who is now becoming a Marvel superhero. Yeah. That is amazing. It's pretty amazing, and it's it's so. What's wonderful is that he's, that's what he's always wanted. Mm-hmm. So his, his dream, he's worked so hard to make his dream come true, and, and we're all really, really proud of him. And looking forward to seeing what he, you know, how he does as, yeah. as Shang-Chi. Shang-Chi. Yeah. yeah, that's going to be amazing. But in the meantime, though, what can we expect with season four? What's going on with this? Well, you know, it's a continuation of all the stories, and I think what the fans are really going to love is the fact that there is movement on all these relationships, all these things that uh, the, you know everybody's been watching, waiting to see what's going to happen. Mm-hmm. So you get movement on the the Shannon and Jung story front, like a massive shift happens here, and you also get movement for with uh, Janet and her relationship, or you know ended relationship with Raj and Nathan, and you've got that lovely little triangle happening there. Uh, Appa and Oma, of course, they continue to explore their their relationship as empty nesters, um, and and all the the sort of uh, great adventures that that entails. Uh, finally, yeah, dis- and the renegotiating, yeah. the, the, the renegotiation that happens when you're when you're a couple without children, and yeah. and certain decisions, you ha- you there are choices you can make now, and how, how, what do you you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah, where you, how are you how do you spend your time now that you it's not completely occupied by children? Yeah, it's interesting. Yep, <laughs> I love this. You know, <laughs> but you know, as the uh, fictional married couple, what do you think their strengths strength is? that has kept this whole family together. You know, Oma and Appa 
they have their they, they, they butt heads, they fight, they squabble, but in the end they, they know that they love each other. They never question mm -hmm. that the other person loves each other. They never question whether or not they sh should or shouldn't have committed. They, it is just, it is, it's a given. They will forgive each other at the end of the day because they just, you know, they're, they're bonded. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that's really what it comes down to, I think, is that they're at that stage as a couple where uh, it does yeah, they'll fight. They'll fight about all the little things, but the big stuff, they agree on all of that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And your friendship together for so many years, yeah. what do you think that bond is? What is it that makes this work? You know, I think it, it comes from uh, mutual respect, admiration, and love. Yeah. Um, because I've known Jeannie uh, longer than I've known my wife. I trust her immensely. I'm in awe of her talent, how much she inspires me. I mean, she was, when I was starting off, already well established in the Toronto theatre scene, in, in the artistic community. Uh, she was a tremendous leader to me, a great Aww. example, and um, she brings it every day on set. Um, I, I could not imagine a better partner, uh, to somebody to, to play with, um, you know, to, to commiserate with, uh, to, to talk <laughs> about da daily challenges, and, you know, we have that. You know, she knew me when I had hair. Yep, you Paul know? had hair. Yeah. It was awesome. So. Wait a minute. I, <laughs> when we first met, when we did uh, that sports, what was it called again? Oh, um, TSN, Off the Record. Off the Record. Yeah. You didn't have hair then. No, I didn't. No, I did I, not. I bet Paul, he was just out of college. Wow. And yeah. I mean, you were already starting to lose it, but he still <laughs> had hair. And But th this is back in the mid-90s, right? And Paul, Paul's talent has always just, it's like, 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 meteor flash and I'm so happy and and grateful that we're working together and Paul I have to say is an amazing number one the number one on a show sets the tone for the whole show um, they, they set the values and the moral and the sort of um, emotional foundation for the show so I uh, Paul's leadership in in in, uh, in Kim's convenience is so generous so kind and he comes in and sets the bar in terms of his preparedness and his um, his, you know, the days are long, and 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 Paul just sets the standard in terms of like how hard we all work to meet to meet to meet his standard, and we're really proud to be working well, together. You know, well, yeah, Jeannie is again; <laughs> she's my partner in all this we're, too. It's not just number; it's number two, number one, and two, mm -hmm. and and we set the tone. We're a pretty good team. Yeah, we're a great team, and I think we 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 complement each other tremendously. Mm -hmm. Um, and she's the brains of the operation for sure because she's so much smarter than I am. Uh, and it is, it, it's, it's, it's a luxury to have somebody that you know who has your back and you can trust and you've, you've, you know, it, it is, yeah, it's, a, fun. it's great. It's fun interviewing you folks. It's fun talking to you on the red carpets. I'm always so happy to see when another <laughs> award is handed to you. But more importantly, I'm just happy that you guys are showing just another side to the Canadian culture. Looking forward to season four. Have a great holiday season Thanks. as we speak, and uh, we'll see you guys in 2020. Thank yeah. you again. See you in 2020. Thanks, Rudy.